Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you all the steps to make a custom divot style board. And it kind of is just a board that has a little bit of give to it. And I wanted to um, show you this part in the beginning. I actually finished it, but the video was all recorded before this because uh, I made a few different changes. This is the board that's gonna be given away to somebody who subscribes and comments down below. We're gonna pick one winner for it. And the only difference from this board and, and what you're gonna see in the video after this is I've added these two kind of triangular wedges and it's cut from the same gym mat material that I use to make the uh, supports on the ends. So these are just to keep it, if the board's too long, it'll sag a little bit. This one's sagged just a tad bit, so I put these in the middle. It doesn't affect anything since they're off towards the edge. And I also talk about incorporating a T-slot in the video uh, because I like being able to use a traditional wooden T. So on the board that I made for myself, um, I'm gonna be demoing this, but this is something you can add on to it after the fact. So you can adjust the T height and use a regular wooden T. And to achieve that, as you can see in mine, I just use a different density foam block. And again, all the stuff that you see throughout the video will be in, in the links down below. So let's get started. In the one that I'm gonna be giving away, I'm gonna be doing a 12 by 24 size here. Uh, the one over here is actually the one I'm making for my indoor simulator right now. And I cut this one to the size I wanted, which is 11 by 32. So if you want to see how to cut the acrylic, if you don't just get a pre-ordered size, stay tuned to the end of the video and you'll see me cutting the acrylic board right here on this surface. And again, so anyone who's subscribed and comments down below, we're going to be giving this one um, that I'm making away. And it's going to be a 12 by 24 by inch and five eighth insert so but you'll see in the video how you can change the stack height if you want so for this video the materials we're using is for the for the the glue this is the one that i found works the best it's just the the gorilla glue max strength uh constructive adhesive and clear so the reason i like this one is because i've used it for three months and i find that i'm changing out my turf or replacing my turf top just about every three months it i can get a lot more use out of it there but i just you know, kind of just looks a little mangled after a while. And this works well because you can actually peel it off after the three months pretty easy and then just put a new piece on and you're good to go. And the reason I like this method of making it myself too is I can match it to my turf. So if you watch my other video for my indoor simulator build, I actually make my own turf by sourcing turf from a turf supplier. And again, any of this stuff is gonna be in the links below. Um, I'll try to make it convenient and get everything on Amazon so you guys can just go ahead and order it up from the acrylic to the glue to, you know, basically everything I'm using. So this is the glue I like, works the best for me. And for the foam, I'm using a one inch, but again, this is gonna determine the, the thickness you make on how thick you want this insert, which in the end, this one's gonna end up about an inch and five eighths. So this is a low density foam that I've found and I've tried a bunch of different ones and I think that this one works, you know, the best that, that what I saw. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't spring back super fast. So it lets you take that divot action and then by the time you're ready to hit the next shot, it's, it's ready to, uh, it, it's flattened down. It's ready for the next one. For the kind of just to prop it up because you want something rigid, a real dense foam. I'm actually using a piece of the gym mat that if you see my other video where I make my own hitting mat, um, I just had an extra piece of puzzle mat, so I just measured it out and cut it to the size that I need for my height. And for the blade, I mean, I'm using a DeWalt style blade, but I'll put links below if this one isn't on Amazon. You just basically want one of these nice blades that you can kind of snap the tip off and get a new piece because you want to always be using a sharp edge while you're doing this. If it gets dull, it's just going to kind of make some ugly cuts. So especially when you're cutting that foam to size, you know, you want to use this and you'll use a similar method to you uh, that you'll see when I'm cutting the acrylic to get nice straight cuts. And this is just a really thick blade. So again, links down below for that. And if you're going to use, um, need to cut your acrylic, this is just an acrylic knife. You can get by using a good uh, razor blade, but in this case, you know, I use an acrylic knife for my use. And if you're wondering what this is, I'm actually gonna try this out. I'm gonna put one of these high density foam pieces underneath my mat at home and drill a hole through the acrylic because I want it to take an actual T. That was one issue that I don't like about the divot mats is you have to use like plastic tees, but I'm gonna try to cut a hole out, stick this on underneath and then see how many times it could take a T. And when this gets 
you know, worn out after a while, this stuff is cheap and you get like a bunch of feet when you buy it, you just peel off the two-sided thing and put another one back on there where that hole is through the acrylic. So I don't wanna show you guys how to do that now because I wanna test it um, for a little bit and see how it works, which I'll be doing on this one here. So let's get started. All right, so you wanna take your piece of acrylic. In this case, I'm using Lexon. This is just one that a lot of people seem to like. I've used it for a while, it works just fine. I've also tried other pieces of acrylic and they work just fine too. This one's just a little more rigid. And this is actually a, so it's a 12 by 24 by 0 0.093. So the 0 0.093 being the thickness. We're gonna start by peeling the first layer of this off. And you don't wanna take this off ahead of time because you want this to stay clean so the glue sticks nice to it. So again, this glue that I like to use is Gorilla Glue. Um, I usually like to buy the caulking size because it's more affordable and I just think it's easier to put on, but this does come in handheld sizes as well. But um, I'll put a nice caulking gun and uh, the glue I like to use in the links below. So you don't have to cover this whole thing. Essentially, you're just gonna wanna start by getting a nice bead and you wanna go kind of close to the edge here. You don't want it to spew out everywhere. And I just kind of do this, this kind of loop around style here. So be generous with it. And again, the reason I like using this one is because I've already peeled off a few pieces of turf and this comes off and lets go really nice. So just get that bead going all the way across. like that and I actually have a piece pre-cut um, for this size but there's another method I like to use better that I'll show you after this so I'm actually gonna lay the turf down first because then I have a window here using the acrylic to where I can set that on there and we'll just line up the edge best we can and we'll put it on just like that. And I don't know if you're thinking, why don't you put more in here? But I, like I said, I've tested this out and you re really don't need that much to uh, you know, get excessive with it. And it only makes changing it out whenever it's time to change it out easier by not using too much and being somewhat sparing with it. But you can see it all smashing down in there, just like that. Just give it a little push. And now what I'm gonna do with this piece is I'm just gonna put something weighted and flat on top of it. So I've been just using a piece of wood in my garage. So I'm gonna put this to the side and then kind of show you this one is already cured overnight here. And this is the one I'm doing for my own. And this is what I like to do. So the method I like to use is I like to glue it on here with a piece exceeding the edge of the acrylic. And you can see I've already trimmed this side and this side after it dried. Cause then when it's dried overnight, now I have a, a nice edge. So I don't have to be so exact when I'm putting that piece on. So I can follow the edge of the acrylic right here with the knife. And once I get it up there, I'm just resting the knife edge against the acrylic and then tracing it all the way down like so. And then you get a perfect cut. So now I got a nice clean cut there on the edge. And again, that limits it from like when it's curing, if it slides at all and it's a little offset. So I really like doing this method. And again, with this side here, I'm just using the edge of the acrylic. And there you go. So now I got this piece cut and now you can see I got perfect straight edges here from using this method, which I, I recommend. So again, just leave it over the edge, glue it on. You can see this one, I went a little bit closer to the edge on when I did it, as opposed to the other one, but didn't really need to do it. But when I do this method, I don't have to worry about it spilling out over the edge because I'm just actually like here, it came, a little came out, but I'm cutting right through the glue. So again, did it that way and just really like doing it that way. So now that this is flipped over, we can start the next process, which is peeling off the other piece of acrylic film protectant. You can see it's nice and shiny under there. Some of this stuff out of the way. 
And now I'm going to be gluing on my basically risers. These are what's going to be, or this is what's going to hold it up. And these are that dense gym mat foam material. So this will keep it at its height. And I'm going to kind of put them in place. I'm not going to go all the way to the edge on this one. And I've already pre-cut the low density foam for this. So I'm going to kind of just mock it up here. And I'm just going to do three strips. I'm going to do one center. And then just two running along the side here. And when I do the T for, um, like I was talking about on mine, I'm not going to show it in this video because I want to test it first before I go and show you guys how to do something that might damage it. I don't know how that hole is going to work when I drill it into the acrylic and use this. So let me give that some time to test out. But this is the best method I found, just this kind of racetrack style. So the first thing I'm going to do, since these aren't stick-ons, is I'm going to get a rough size here. I don't need to go all the way to the edge with it. And I'm trying to get as much of this as I can out of the, out of the pack that it came in. But I'm just going to take the caulking gun and put a bead right on my riser. And you can use anything for this, just something dense. You don't want to use anything hard that's going to knock or make funny noises. But this is a really dense gym mat foam, so um, I like using that. So you can see, I'm just going to put a piece there, just like that. Make sure it's nice and straight. Go to the other side. Get a bead on that one. Put it on there nice and straight. And now since these conveniently have a sticky side to them, I'm just gonna peel the backing off partially. Get it nice and flat against there. And I'm kind of eyeballing this. If you wanna get like perfectly straight, you can, uh, you can measure it out, but I mean, I can kind of see that, that that's, that's, as, that's pretty straight there. All right. And then I like to start with the two outside edges first. And this is just the more common area that I'm hitting. And sometimes I'm hitting off this side and this side. So it doesn't really make sense to go all the way to the edge here for me. Again, we're just gonna peel a little bit of that backing off. And that piece there will move on you a bit, but if you do it at the same time you do the acrylic, it'll be cured at the same time. So just this case, I wanted to do it this way to show you for the video. All right, last piece. This one just right up the center. And now I got those two pieces. That's why I do those first, because I can kind of see it's an even gap in between. And then I'll just take these two riser pieces that I have to set the height. And you can see in this, this actually sticks up a little bit more, but this foam's so dense that when this board's sitting there, it's, these are gonna act as a support as well. And then when you're striking it, you'll get that nice give. Now, what I was saying before, I'm gonna drill out a hole once I get this in place and figure out where a good T-spot is for my driver. And I'm just gonna use this high density foam and just stick it on right where that hole is. So that way from the top, I just have a small hole through the turf and then I could just take a T and stick it in there. And then I should be able to just keep reusing it just because of the style that this foam is. And then, you know, like I said, whenever that one gets worn out, if it does, and I'll just stick another one on there. So I like to use a real T, so I really want to try to use that one and see how it goes. So this one's, I mean, this is basically done now. I can take this and carefully flip it over. And now the weight of this board will help that glue cure. And I'll just leave that there for a few hours so it gets pretty much set. And then I'll wait till tomorrow to install this. So as you can see, you got that kind of divot style and how it just kind of pops back up. 
And if you have one that has too much gift to it, what I found, there's some that, that are being made and sold out there, but they just have way too much give. And what I found it does is changes the launch angle pretty significantly. So you kind of think if it's giving on your fat shots, you might it might just give too much and you just catch it and it just launches it higher. And even on good strikes, I found it to kind of spring too much. So this one, I like that foam because it doesn't push back fast. It like collapses and then it comes back up slowly ready for the next shot. So that's pretty much it. Again, guys, all this stuff is gonna be down in the description below and I'm gonna go do the one that we just glued, get that all put together. I got all the pieces here. It's gonna be an inch and five eighths thick. And again, I'm using that gym mat for this. So th that one's gonna be a little bit taller, but as long as you are subscribed and you like, um, we're gonna pick a winner after about a week and ship this one out to you for free of charge. So thanks again for watching guys. If you have any questions, please, uh, please comment down below and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, so if you need to cut the acrylic sheet to the size you want for your space, if you're not just ordering um, a size that's already pre-cut, uh, this is a way you can do it. You get yourself one of these acrylic knives, but if you're in a pinch, you can also use a pretty sharp, durable box cutter as well. But basically, I've just mapped out my uh, dimensions here that I want. I'm gonna cut this lengthwise, and I use a level, but you can use a straight edge, um, kind of a 90 degree angle like that back there if it's long enough, which in this case, it's not for me, and uh, just a couple clamps. So you wanna clamp it down tight and make sure you got the line that you wanna cut it on, and you're gonna use the edge of whatever it is you're, you're uh, clamping down to rest the edge of the blade against when you cut across, so you make sure you get a straight cut. So I'm gonna do a couple passes here. And you don't have to push down super hard, just kind of get that first scoring cut, making sure to hold it up against your edge and just make sure that this piece is not moving. I'll kind of go back this way. I don't want to go off the, onto the countertop. Okay. That should be pretty good there. So you just need a couple good cuts in there and then you're gonna to wanna to slide this over to the edge. Just so that cut edge is back against the countertop. Again, this kind of limits it from breaking off of the line you want it to break on. And then you just give it a push down and it just snaps right off like that. You can see it's hanging on there still because it still has that piece of plastic. So you can get a box cutter or a knife. I'll see if I can use this cutting tool to do this, just to kind of get it off of there. Box cutter will work better on this one, but there you go. You get the idea. And you want to keep that plastic on just because you don't want any contaminants on there while you do the next steps.